What we had stumbled across is something called positive psychology, which is the reason that I'm here today and the reason that I wake up every morning. When I first started to talk about this research outside of academia, out with companies and schools, the very first thing they said to never do is to start your talk with a graph. The very first thing I wanted to do is start my talk with a graph. <laughs> this graph looks boring, but this graph is the reason that I get excited and wake up every morning. And this graph doesn't even mean anything. It's fake data. What we found is... <laughs> If I got this data back studying you here in the room, I would be thrilled because there's very clearly a trend that's going on there and that means that I can get published, which is all that really matters. <laughs> the fact that there's one weird red dot that's up above the curve, there's one weird in the room, you know who you are, I saw you earlier. <laughs> that's no problem. That's no problem as most of you know because I can just delete that dot. I can delete that dot because that's clearly a measurement error and we know that's a measurement error because it's messing up my data. <laughs> So one of the very first things that we teach people in economics and statistics and business and psychology courses is how in a statistically valid way do we eliminate the weirdos? How do we eliminate the outliers? <laughs> so that we can find the line of best fit, which is fantastic if I'm trying to find out how many Advil the average person should be taking, too. But if I'm interested in potential, if I'm interested in your potential or for happiness or productivity or energy or creativity, what we're doing is we're creating the cult of the average with science. If I ask a question like how fast can a child learn how to read in a classroom, scientists change the answer to how fast does the average child learn how to read in that classroom? And then we tailor the class right towards the average. Now, if you fall below the average on this curve, then psychologists get thrilled because that means you're either depressed or you have a disorder or hopefully both. <laughs> We're hoping for both because our business model is if you come into a therapy session with one problem, we want to make sure you leave knowing you have 10. So you'll keep coming back over and over again. We'll go back into your childhood if necessary, but eventually what we want to do is to make you normal again. But normal is merely average. And what I posit and what positive psychology posits is that if we study what is merely average, we will remain merely average. Then instead of deleting those positive outliers, what I intentionally do is come into a population like this one and says, why? Why is it that some of you are so high above the curve in terms of your intellectual ability, athletic ability, musical ability, creativity, energy levels, your resiliency in the face of challenge, your sense of humor? Whatever it is, instead of deleting you, what I want to do is study you. Because maybe we can glean information, not just how to move people up to the average, but how we can move the entire average up.